Shine, moon, shine, and let me knit my line. Green robes and shoes of red. Tomorrow morn, I am wet. Excerpt from the poem Vodník by Karel Jaromír Erben. As you can see, we are back at the medieval village Zepora today, and that's for a reason. You see, there are several ponds around here, and today I want to talk about Vodianoi, also known as Vodník in my country. It's a male water spirit from Slavic mythology and folklore. Vodník is perhaps the most popular supernatural being in Czech Republic, firmly established in our landscape. Almost every rural pond has its own Hastrman. In Czech folk demonology, Vodník was the personification of the dark, cold, unexplored water element, a personified natural force. This cunning monster broke the ice in the spring, raised waters, tore down dams, and caused floods. He lured people into the water and drowned them. There isn't really one specific version across the Slavic nations. First of all, it depends on the story, because he might have different attributes and abilities in different stories. The Czech Vodník in its original demonic form has distant relatives in many Slavic nations. In Russia it is called Vodianik or Vodianoi, in Slovenia Vodeni, in Poland Vodnik. A classical Slavic personification of the water element, and Topielec, a demon born from a drowned person. The East Slavic conception looks more like a monster with a frog-like face. In the West Slavic stories, Vodnik increasingly acquired human form, until in Czech fairy tales he finally transformed from a terrifying demon into a little man with green hair and green tailcoat. Vodnik from folk tales and fairy tales is no longer an unfriendly monster, but rather a person endowed with uh, supernatural abilities. And although he is capricious and mischievous, he also helps good people. He's mostly called Vodnik here, but sometimes also Hastermann, which comes from the German word Wassermann, waterman. He lives in ponds, lakes, and sometimes rivers. He has green skin and in some versions membrane between fingers. He wears colorful clothes, usually green, red and brown. He also wears strange hats, for example a top hat with colorful ribbons. He's often depicted smoking a pipe while sitting on a willow tree near a body of water. Vodnik can withstand lingering for hours outside his pond. When he does so, one can certainly discern him by his wet coattails, from which water is dripping under all circumstances. Vodnik smoking a pipe on a willow tree was a favorite visual of one of our most famous illustrators, Josef Lada. He did many different versions of such scenes. In fact, there are garden statues of Vodnik based on Lada's illustrations, which you can often see near ponds. There's one sitting on a tree next to a river even in the village where I grew up. So I think that Lada contributed a lot to the popularization of this creature. If you've played The Witcher 1, you know that there are Vodianois near murky waters. There's also, of course, Drowners, and I think that the water hack in The Witcher 3 is inspired by Vodnik as well. In fairy tales he's usually viewed mostly as good and wise, but there are some that act like pranksters. Millers and fishermen want to be on his good side, and sometimes make sacrifices to appease him, since he can control water and fish, and therefore can help humans this way. When angered he breaks dams, washes down water mills and drowns people and animals. He stores the souls of the drowned in porcelain teapots and considers them as the most valuable heritage and in a way display of his work. The number of these pots is representative of his wealth or status among others of his kind. In some stories he drags people down to his underwater dwelling to serve him. In our country we have this very famous collection of poems called Kytice by Karel Jaromír Erben. It's very much inspired by Slavic folk culture and it was even translated into English by Jantar Publishing. So if that's something that would interest you, I'll put a link for the book to the description box. One of the most known poems from this book is called Vodník. It starts with him sewing his wedding suit and shoes and proclaiming that tomorrow will be his wedding. 
Near his lake lives a young girl and the next day she decides to go to the lake to wash her laundry. Her mother urges her not to go because she had a dream in which she was preparing her for her wedding and her dress looked like a water foam. The mother sees that as a bad omen and begs her not to go, but the girl doesn't listen and goes anyway. As she washes her laundry, the pier breaks under her, she falls into the lake and Vodnik captures her. Several months later, in his dwelling, she cradles their son while Vodnik is repairing his nets. She is singing a lullaby to the child in which she describes how sad she is in her new water home and that she would rather be dead in a grave that was made after she vanished. At least that way she would be closer to her mother, which she is missing badly. He is her only joy here in this cold and gloomy underwater world. Vodnik hears it and tells her not to sing that or else he will turn her into a mute fish. She calms him down and apologizes but explains that she's sad because she begged him hundred times in the past to let her visit her mother one last time and say goodbye but he wouldn't let her go. If he wants to turn her into something he should turn her into a rock that doesn't feel anything. Vodnik says that he would let her go, but he's afraid that she won't come back. Eventually he permits her to visit her mother for a day, but she has to leave their son with him and come back in the evening. He also urges her not to hug her mother or anyone else, because her love for the outside world would win over the sense of duty, keep her there and she wouldn't return to him. But when she leaves and sees her mother after all this time, she hugs her anyway in tears of joy. After a while she says goodbye, because she's afraid of what evening might bring, but the mother insists that she has to stay with her. Her daughter can't leave and live with that water monster, she won't let that happen. The door is locked and he has no power over the daughter here outside the water. As the evening comes, they hear banging on the door and Vodnik saying, Come back home my wife, I have no dinner. But the mother shouts at him to go away. At midnight they hear banging again and Vodnik says, Come back home my wife, come back to bed. But the mother again sends him away. After a while they hear banging for the third time and Vodnik says Come back home my wife, our child is crying, you should feed him. The daughter begs her mother to let her go because of the child, but the mother won't let her leave and tells Vodnik that if he really cares about the child that much, he can bring it to their doorstep. And so he does. They hear a storm raging over the lake coming towards them and in those sounds the crying of the baby. Suddenly it stops and everything quiets down. They hear two thumps and see blood coming from under the door. When the mother opens the door she screams in horror when she sees the body of the child and his head that Vodnik ripped away. The end. Pretty cheerful stuff right? This collection of poems is famously morbid and dark, but other stories and fairy tales which include Vodnik are usually more family friendly and not that grim. I personally really love creepy stories like this and if anyone would be interested there is a live action adaptation of Kitice. But the book and its adaptation is a subject for a whole separate video I want to do in the future, so stay tuned for that. In any case, next time when you go swimming in a river, lake or pond, be careful out there. See you next time.